Time is money, and we are cashing in. Get ready to Scrooge McDuck your way from millions to billions to trillions in cold hard coin. We're counting down the richest people and families through the decades. Lucky for you, we are giving this one away for free. In the 1920s, nobody rocked a wallet chain quite like John D. Rockefeller. After taking just one business class at E.G. Folsom Commercial College, Rockefeller decided to cash in on his natural sense for business by betting big on oil. It was a damn good bet. By 1877, his corporation Standard Oil refined 90% of America's oil, and Johnny Boy was the richest man in America. He held on to the title through the 1920s, making charity and philanthropy a priority, along with racking up stacks on stacks of cash. For the Rockefellers, it seems the apples fall right under the tree and then roll into a pile of cash. The Rockefeller family remained the richest family in the U.S. following John D. Rockefeller's death in 1937, when his wealth and control of the foundations he'd established were passed on to them. The Rockefeller kids and grandkids were responsible for slapping the family name on dozens of additional institutions, initiatives, and New York streets and buildings. In the 30s, the Rockefeller family controlled 1.6% of the entire U.S. economy, a number that even by today's standards makes Jeff Bezos seem strapped for cash. The next person on our list made his own car, hopped in, and then drove all the way to the bank. Henry Ford was the wealthiest man of the 1940s, thanks in large part to the auto industry boom he helped usher in. He popularized the five-day work week and assembly line techniques that revolutionized the way we work today. But it was the sales of Ford's extremely popular Model T that padded his pockets and made him the wealthiest man in the country by the 1940s. When he passed away in 1947, he was worth today's equivalent of $199 billion. Yep, billion, with a big old B. That kind of money could buy a 2020 Mustang for every single person in the state of Maryland. They say that time is money, but we're starting to think that maybe oil is the real cash cow. J. Paul Getty was the richest man of the 1950s, raking in the big bucks from his illustrious oil dealings. He streamlined the oil business by making the Getty Oil Company self-sufficient by bringing the processes of drilling, refining, and selling all under one richy rich roof. He took all that oil money and invested it right into oil paintings and other art, which formed the base collection of the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. Upon his death, he left the museum $661 million. That's a barrel load of oil paintings. Everyone loves a rags-to-riches story, especially the Mellon family, who went from potato farmers to Wall Street dynasty in just two generations. In 1869, Thomas Mellon established the T. Mellon & Sons private bank and soon took interests in a broader range of industries like oil, steel, coal, media, and the railroads. As T. Mellon aged, he relied on the sons part of the company to keep building the business, and boy did they ever. Richard K. Mellon, Thomas's grandson, bulked up the family fortune to $5 billion by the early 60s, which by 2020 standards is roughly $42 billion. A wealthy pilot and Hollywood player who is also a mysterious recluse. Who is he? Howard Hughes was known for his stacks of cash, just as well as he was known for his eccentricity. After taking over his family's oil drill manufacturing company, he used the profits to finance classic films in the Hollywood studio system, found the Hughes Aircraft Company, and buy a controlling interest in airline giant TWA. The bigger his bank account got, the more reclusive and downright strange Hughes' behavior became. When he passed away in 1976, he left behind a fortune equivalent to $6.74 billion in today's dollars, and that had people coming out of the woodwork with fake versions of his will trying to cash in. Being rich and unusual pays off. Hughes' legacy remains that of the charming, if eccentric, billionaire. Turns out there's big cha-ching in the chemical biz. Just ask the DuPont family. Founded in 1802 as a gunpowder manufacturer, the DuPont's family business grew over the next two centuries, producing everything from dynamite to automotive paint. The company also helped pioneer the materials industry, inventing nylon, Kevlar, and Teflon. 
That's right. Thank the DuPonts for your pantyhose, bulletproof vests, and frying pans. By 1982, the DuPonts were the richest family on the Forbes 400 list, with an estimated equivalent of $10 billion in today's dollars to their name. Now, that number is closer to $14 billion. These days, the DuPonts spread the wealth among 3,500 family members. However, none of these current DuPonts actually run the DuPont company. Heading into the 90s, John Kluge had a huge bank account. A true media mogul, Kluge owned Metro Media, which controlled seven independent television stations, 14 radio stations, outdoor advertising, and even the Harlem Globetrotters. Kluge's television empire became the core of the brand spanking new Fox network when it launched in the mid-1980s. Kluge is reputed to have sold his TV stations to 20th Century Fox for a cool $4 billion and then went on to sell the remaining Metro Media subsidiaries for another cool billion, putting his total net worth at an extremely cold 5.9 billion and placing him firmly at the top of the rich people food chain by 1990. Very cool. In the 2000s, Bill Gates was cashing in on the already established Microsoft empire, making him the richest man of the decade. Founded in 1975, Microsoft grew into the biggest software company in the world by the late 80s, and when they went public in 1986, Bill Gates became the youngest billionaire in the history of ever. When Microsoft introduced the insanely popular Windows 95 in, well, 1995, their profits skyrocketed, making him even richer. Gates has since sold the majority of his Microsoft stock Bye. and stepped down as a board member of the company in 2020. Today, he focuses on philanthropic pursuits with the Gates Foundation, while also sitting on a fat load of cash to the tune of nearly $113 billion. Inventor of Prime Day and crusher of brick-and-mortar stores, Jeff Bezos is next on our list as the richest person of the 2010s. When Bezos started Amazon in 1994, his plan was to sell books out of his garage. The Amazon website launched in 1995, and in 1997, the company went public. But it wasn't until 2003 that the company started raking in money at breakneck speeds, and Bezos never looked back. One of the key players behind the revolution of online shopping, Amazon's influence had led to a shift away from traditional retail shopping. As of 2020, Amazon is worth $1.38 trillion, which is more than the entire economic GDP of Australia, the 13th richest country in the world. With 11% ownership, Bezos himself has cultivated a net worth of around $204.6 billion. Holy shopping. While Bezos was quick to make his multi-billions, the final family on our list has done so slow and steady, and boy oh boy has it paid off. The Walton family, led by brothers Sam and Bud, founded Walmart in Rogers, Arkansas in 1962. Roughly a decade later, they had 18 stores across the Midwest and were boasting $1 billion in sales. Over the next 40 years, Walmart ballooned to 11,000 stores and 2.2 million employees worldwide as of 2020, with over $520 billion in revenue. So that's what those big yellow smileys are so happy about. Today, the family's net worth is estimated at $215 billion, making them the richest non-royal family in the world. With wall-to-wall -wall cash like that, the Waltons will probably never know the true joy of scoring a sweet deal on rollback prices. Well, there you have it. Lifestyles of the rich and famous have nothing on this list. Until next time, remember wealth is in the eye of the high roller, and you can take that all the way to the bank.